Happy Mother's Day again to everybody. I'm not up here to be your speaker this year. I'm here to introduce our speaker. It's my privilege to do that. She's grown up here from somewhat of a, a tomboy, if, you, if I could say. <laughs> one of the greatest gifts that Justin told me that she got, that he was so impressed with, was a BB one year, a BB gun. So she liked all that, and she could be tough. But she also can be very dainty, and she has grown into a, an amazing lady. And so I asked my husband if I could introduce her today because he gets to introduce everybody, but she's special to me, and I wanted to do this. She, um, a few months ago, well, actually, probably a year and a half ago, two years, we started praying about who we could get to take over our ladies' ministry because it's not a job for the faint of heart. <laughs> you have many people's to deal with and and it is a ministry we don't feel of it as just a position it is a ministry and we prayed about it and we both felt at the same time that it should be Amy and so we prayed that she would feel the burden for it because if it wouldn't be good if she didn't have a burden for it as well so it wouldn't be a good match and so we talked about it and then we confronted her with it I was really really thankful she didn't run because <laughs> she could have and probably would have been smart Amy to run but <laughs> she didn't and she has taken this on with such heart in it she she goes full force into it and I'm talking about you are safe in her hands she's done a very great job about it um a few weeks ago, she came to me and she, I don't know if we called each other or we met here at church or text. I don't have a great memory anymore, so I'll just go with that. Um, but she asked me, did I have something planned for Mother's Day? Well, at that particular moment, I didn't, but I can be ready for it if that's what you need. And I told her that. But I said, well, what about you? Because I didn't ask her to take this job and then I tell her how to do it. I don't do that. I, I don't want her to sink and I'll help her if she needs it. I want her to do great. I think the, the quality of a great leader or a good leader should be working ourselves out of a job and training ourselves out of a job and know when to do that, not just to do it, but know when to do it. And so I just said to her, you know, I'll help you any way that I can, but I give you this job. So she said to my delight again that she had a thought. And I was like, that's great, you know, what is that? And, and go with it. And she told me a few little things and I was just so overwhelmed with gratitude from God and proud of her with a godly pride you understand that that she God has not only brought her into this position and she accepted it but she also accepted the calling that goes with it and so I'm very proud of her for that and so her greatest title is mother and that's the one that she would ask or say that she loves the most but right now I feel like that we should honor her as our ladies ministries leader because that's what she is doing and she has a word for us this morning Good morning, everyone. Okay. I know you're standing, but my feet already hurt, so you'll be okay. I found the Webster's definition of a mother, and there's three parts. A female parent, like she's the mother of three children. A woman in authority, like Mother Teresa. Or an elderly woman, like old Mother Hubbard. So now, I want you to find someone who falls into one of those categories tell her happy Mother's Day and tell her she looks lovely. I do feel like I already owe you an apology because I'm a Sunday school teacher and I teach through a snack. Whatever the, the lesson is, I make a snack to go with it because if you feed them, they will like you and they will be nice to you. I do not have a snack for you and I'm so sorry. And I do have one request. I teach fifth grade. I've been a teacher. I think I'm in like my 12th or 13th year. I'm not sure. And the thing about kids is they talk the whole time you're talking. So whatever pops into your head, you can just say it. And I will feel very comfortable. So if, I, if you get hungry, you can say, when, when's lunch? Because I hear that a lot. If you need to go to the bathroom, you can say, hey, I need to go to the bathroom. That will make me feel much more comfortable. My scripture is Esther 4:14. 4, For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. So to me, that, that says, my commentary for that is, 
if you stay quiet, if you stay still, God's people is still going to be taken care of, but it's not going to be because of you. And your family and your home is going to be in trouble. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And it's that last phrase that I really want to focus on. Um, when Daryl and I began thinking and praying and making plans to start our family, you know, we envisioned this perfect world, perfect society, all kind people, everybody loves everybody else. But I remember my mother's words to me, and I know it was hard for her because she wanted grandchildren close by. She already had grandchildren, but they lived far, far away. She wanted grandchildren close by, but she told me to consider the world that I would have to raise my children in. So I did, but I, I still wanted children. So, you know, now I have two boys. We had our children, and our whole idea of what the world was going to be like came crumbling down because we saw now through a parent's eyes all the dangers in the world. We learned very quickly you put a death grip on your children's hands. To this day, when we go into a grocery store, my children lock onto the grocery cart, and that's where they stay. Because I, I wanted to put a, a fear in them, too. I don't want them running off. I want them to know that there are dangers out there. And that's normal. That's a healthy fear. Okay? The difference, I found this definition, too. The difference between fear and worry, because I feel like I use those two terms interchangeably, but they're not the same. True fear is a gift that signals us in the presence of danger. So to me, fear keeps us alive. We have to have a healthy fear. Unwarranted fear, that's worry, will always be based, based upon something in your imagination or even a memory. Worry is the fear that we manufacture. It's our choice. Okay, so I had a healthy fear to keep my children alive. That's normal. However, during quarantine, you know, I had a lot of time on my hands, a lot of time to think and imagine all these scenarios, and I began having a very unhealthy fear. It was a fear not of the virus, because I was doing what I was supposed to do to protect myself against that. I began to, to feel guilt for bringing my children into this world because the world was falling apart. It wasn't fair to them. They couldn't go to school. They couldn't play with their friends. We had birthday parties that they couldn't invite their friends to. And that just wasn't, in my eyes, it wasn't fair to them. And it was like no end in sight. Like how long was this going to take? How long were we going to have to sit and do this? It was very scary. It was, that was a worry. It was an, well, maybe it was a fear. I don't know. During one of my many, many breakdowns during quarantine, and I'm a homebody. I like to be in home, but too much of a good thing is maybe not so, uh, such a good thing. One of my many, many breakdowns, this scripture that I just read to you came up in my news feed. And as soon as I read it, I felt peace. I felt a calm come over me because I was reminded once again, before Daryl and I ever planned to have children, God knew. God knew. They were created for such a time as this. He knew that they were going to be going through COVID-19. They knew, God knew that they would be living quarantine for however long. And he created them with every bit of strength, every bit of grit, everything that they needed to make it through and be okay. And a, a calm came over me. The word in our scripture, enlargement, where it says, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise, that word enlargement actually means to breathe. Like I thought it meant to, to get bigger, but it means to breathe. And I thought about that because, and I'm having it right now, have you ever been so worried you couldn't breathe? Like the weight of the world is on your chest? That's how Mordecai I was feeling right here. That's how the Jews were feeling. Their very lives were under attack. They were, their lives were being threatened. <clears throat> but I'm truly awed 
by Mordecai's faith here. He's trying to convince Esther, hey, you need to step up. You need to speak up. You need to save your people. But he knows whether she does what she's supposed to do or not, God's people are going to be okay. But ladies, I want to challenge you because we're instructed, I feel like we're instructed to stand in the gap for our children. We're instructed to speak up on their behalf. We're instructed to pray for them, cover them, be what they need us to be. Don't sit back and be quiet. Don't sit back and watch danger come to your children. Step up for them. We have to be bold. We have to be specific in our prayers, intercede on their behalf. So mamas, don't stress, don't worry, don't fear. Your children, whether they are young or grown, were put where they are for such a time as this. Now you may say, how, how is that possible? They're not even living for God. They're far from God. And that may be true at this time. But God is not far from them. They may be running from him, but he is right there with them. And I believe he is calling them back. Now, I realize I just told a bunch of ladies not to worry and not to stress. And that's just what we love to hear when we are worried and stressed. So I'm going to leave you with one more scripture, one more thought. Found in Matthew 14, 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went into them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it's you, bid me come unto thee on the water. I found myself there. If it's, if it's really you, prove it to me. I need to see it. Then he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. To me, this, this story is kind of confusing because it's a back and forth between faith and fear. Peter had the faith to step out. He had the faith to call on God when he needed him. But yet he, he worried, he feared. Because I always feel like fear, fear and faith can't go together. You either are afraid or you believe. But maybe fear isn't the absence, or faith isn't the absence of fear, but maybe it's just the presence of a stronger trust. He was afraid, but his trust was still greater. So that gives me comfort because I find myself condemning myself because I'm scared of something or I'm worried about something. But maybe that's okay. Maybe my trust is just greater. So remember, mamas, when you find yourself worried, don't try to fix it on your own. Peter could have, like that's probably what I would have done if I stepped out on the water and I felt myself begin to sink, I would have turned around and tried to get myself back. But he didn't do that. He called on the Lord. And so that's, I feel like that's what we are instructed to do. When we see things start going downhill, don't try to fix it ourselves. Call on the Lord. <laughs> what a great, great presentation. Thank you, Sister Amy. Amen, a very kind and thoughtful gift that will certainly be used, I'm sure not today, but it'll certainly be used right after today. And uh, we appreciate you so very much. What an incredible opportunity to be together and to honor our mothers. There's many things that we could say, but I would promise you that when we finished, our vocabulary would fall woefully short to describe and to thank and to appreciate, to lift up, and to praise our mothers. And I'm thankful for Sister Amy's being very specific about what a mother is. There's a lot of people that are tremendous mother figures and influencers who have left tremendous, tremendous impressions upon the heart and the lives of people through the years. We have many people that we may look at as a mother or mother figure. And uh, I'm thankful for those people that have been so conscientious and unselfish to invest into the lives of other people. I'm thankful for the mother figures just within the context of church that take our children into children's ministry settings of all ages and they break off the word of the Lord and they put it on their level. 
and they are instilling the truths of the word of God. And then when those children, uh, as they grow in the atmosphere of being in adult services, they can relate to what the various ministers are saying because somebody took the time to love them like they love their own children and to treat them like they treat their own children. And I am very thankful for that. There's many adults here today that are where you are because somebody took the time to invest in you. They didn't just, they didn't just teach at you. They loved you and they were concerned about you. And so how, how could we possibly say thank you enough to the mothers. I trust that you have a wonderful rest of your day and whatever your Mother's Day plans are, I pray that it will it will be time well invested to say thank you. Yeah.